welcome to electric fund in today's class we are going to discuss about jordan canonical form and its state space representation so this is a given question y of s by u of s equals to 2s square plus 6s plus 5 divided by s cube plus 4s square plus 5s plus 2 so for this transfer function we have to represent the jordan canonical form and also we have to represent its state space representation So first, what you have to do means the given transfer function t two s square plus six s plus five by s cube plus four s square plus five s plus two can be written as two s square plus six s plus five divided by s plus one into s plus one into s plus two. If you product all these three terms, you will get the same denominator. Next, after that, you have to apply partial fractions. After applying partial fractions, the above equation can be written as 2s square plus 6s plus 5 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 1 can be written as s plus 1 whole square into s plus 2. That is equals to whenever we are having s plus 1 whole square, that 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 represents that it will have some repeated variables. So the partial fraction has to be represented as shown here. So whenever it is s plus 1 whole square or s plus a whole square. That s plus one whole square represents the repeated variables, so the standard partial fraction has to be represented as this way. That is a by s plus one whole square plus b by s plus one plus c by s plus two. This one you have to remember how to represent when the variables are repeated. Here you can see that s plus one whole square. That means it will have repeated variables. For that sake, the partial fraction has to be represented as shown here. And also you can remember that there are three s s power three is that that is nothing but order that 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 denotes that it should have some three poles. So already this s cube plus four s square plus five s plus two is written as s plus one into s plus one into s plus two. That resembles that this system is having three poles. That is s equals to minus one is one pole, s equals to minus one is one pole, and s equals to minus two is one pole. So this is how to represent the partial fraction. That further the equation is written as. The numerator term I am keeping here itself 2s square plus 6s plus 5. That is equals to this term as it is I have put a by 1, s plus 1 whole square plus b by s plus 1 in plus c by s plus 2. The denominator whatever it is there I am taking it to the right side. This division part if it goes to that side it is multiplication. After this step what you have to do means you have to multiply each and every term with this equation. So, like if we multiply a by s plus one whole square into this term, if you multiply, what happens? S plus one whole square, s plus one whole square gets cancelled. What will be the remaining term? A into s plus two. Same thing we have written over here. Plus b by s plus one into the s plus one whole square into s plus two. If this term and is multiplied with this one, what happens? Here s plus one whole square, here s plus one means one term gets cancelled. So, what will be the remaining term? S plus one into s plus two. Same thing we have written. Plus C by s plus two term has to be multiplied with this term. So if you multiply that, what will happen? S plus two, s plus two gets cancelled. The remaining term, whatever it is there, we have to write over here. So this is the equation what it has been framed after solving this above equation. That is two s square plus six s plus five equals to a into s plus two plus b into s plus one into s plus two plus c into s plus one whole square. After this, we have to put We have to solve out. We have to solve the uh, unknown variables a, b, and c. For that sake, we have to substitute the value of s. So initially, let us put s equals to minus two. If you put s equals to minus two in this equation, you have to put wherever there is s. You have to put s equals to minus two. Suppose if you put here, what happens? Minus two plus two means this term becomes zero. Minus two plus two is nothing but zero. Zero into something is zero. This term becomes zero. Similarly, here also you can see one s plus term. So minus two plus two becomes zero. Something into zero is totally zero. So what will be the remaining term from this equation? If you substitute this, you will get the value of c. That is what we have done. So we have substituted s equals to minus two in the whole equation, and we have got the solution for c. That is c equals to one. Similarly, we we are having unknown variables a and b. Now let us substitute s equals to minus one. Suppose if you substitute s equals to minus one, so minus one plus one is nothing but zero. Zero into something is zero. Means this total term gets cancelled. Here also in c also if you substitute s equals to minus one, what happens? C term also gets cancelled. Means b and c will be become zero, and from that you can find out a value. Same thing we have found. So we have put s equals to minus one in the whole equation. After solving that, we got a equals to one. Now we have to solve for the value of b. We got c and a. Now we have to solve for b. So for that sake, let us substitute s equals to zero, as well as you have to substitute the values of a and c. 
so after substituting the values of a c and s equals to 0 and after solving this we will get b value equals to 1 so now what happened we have got c value equals to 1 a value equals to 1 and b equal b value equals to 1 now you have to substitute all these three values a b c values in the required transfer function then this transfer function can be written as 1 by s plus 1 whole square that is a value we have substituted next b value is 1 that is 1 by s plus 1 and next coming to the c value that is 1 by s plus 2 so this is the required transfer function now for this transfer function we have to represent its state space representation so already in the beginning itself we have written the required transfer function as 2s square plus 6s plus 5 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 1 into s plus 2 what does this denominator values indicates it indicates the number of poles that is s equals to minus 1 is 1 pole, s equals to minus 1 is 1 pole, s equals to minus 2 is 1 pole. This all three poles, these poles and these poles are one and the same. So this all the three poles has to be represented in diagonal form. So in diagonal form we have to represent. So s equals to minus 1 is one pole, s equals to minus 1 is other pole and s equals to minus 2 is the other pole. All the poles has to be represented in diagonal form. Then you have to see that whether the poles are repeated or not. If the poles are not repeated, then the form of uh, matrix whatever we obtain is, ju is just a diagonal canonical form. But if the poles are repeated, then the, then the matrix whatever it is formed, then that matrix is called as Jordan canonical form. So here if you see minus 1 and minus 1, so minus 1 and minus 1 is repeated. If the poles are not repeated, the diagonal elements itself will be there and remaining ev every element will be 0. But in this case, you can see that minus 1 is 1 pole and minus 1 is 1 pole and minus 2 is 1 pole. So these two are similar and these two are different. So here, if both poles are repeated, then the next element corresponding to this minus 1 should be written as 1 and remaining element 0. Suppose if you are having here minus 1 and here also minus 1. If both the poles are repeated, then the corresponding element beside this has to be written 1. I mean, the corresponding element beside this has to be written 1. So here if you could observe this minus 1, minus 1, minus 2 are the poles has represented in diagonal form and you have to observe whether they are distinct or not. If they are distinct then it is simply a diagonal canonical form. But here you can observe that poles are re repeated so we have written the other element beside this one as 1. So this is the 2 by 2 matrix which is generally representing the Jordan canonical form into x1, x2, x3 plus and coming to b matrix if you could observe there is only one pole repeated so first element should be 0 and the remaining two elements should be 1 and 1 if two poles are repeated then it should be 0, 0, 1 and coming to the y that is y equals to 1, 1, 1 the elements whichever it is in the numerator indicates the zeros that element should be represented in c matrix that is 1, 1, 1 so 1, 1, 1 this is your c matrix into x1, x2, x3 plus d matrix will be 0 this is how to represent the Jordan canonical form state space representation of a given transfer function. If you like the video, please like it, share it and comment. Thank you.